Hello! In this episode I'm going to be doing a general overview of how you can use generators, deformers and effectors, more specifically in relation to manipulating geometry. But it's just giving you an idea of how they're meant to be used in case you've struggled to get them to work. So for generators, they're generally meant to be used as the parent of the objects they're going to be affecting. Um, so I'm going to use a subdivision surface for demonstration here. I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to give it a few segments. Okay, so if I place this cube as a child of the subdivision surface, so the subdivision surface generator is the parent of the object, you can see that it's doing its job. It's subdividing the polygons on the cube. Now, if I was to get another one, um, let's say symmetry, same thing applies. Make the cube the child of that symmetry object and you can see it's working. Now, this won't work for absolutely every generator because some of them deal with splines and some of them require multiple objects, so on and so forth. But the general theme across all of them is that, well, I think there may be one or two exceptions, but the general theme is they should be the parent of the object that they're going to be affecting. That's the main takeaway from dealing with generators. Now, if there's ever a point where you need to affect multiple objects, as you can see here, it doesn't seem to work. Now, there's a second rule, which I think doesn't apply to as many generators, but it seems to apply to both symmetry and subdivision surface, so I may as well cover those. As you can see with the symmetry, it only seems to be affecting the topmost child of the hierarchy. And if I was to grab these and place them under the subdivision surface, you can see same thing again. It only seems to be affecting the topmost child of the hierarchy. So if you want both of these cubes to be affected by the um, generator, what you need to do is place them within a group. Now this could be a null, it could be an, some other object, it doesn't really matter. As long as there's only one child of this generator, anything within that child will be affected by that generator. So you can see these both being subdivided and if I place this within the symmetry, they're now both being affected by the symmetry. Now if there's ever a case where you don't want one of the children to be affected by the generator, what you can do is go into tags, go into modeling tags and select stop and there's a stop generators um, button here. As you can see, it stopped generating the symmetry of that cube. So if I toggle it off, it's working again. Toggle it on, it disables it. And the same applies with subdivision surface. You can see with it on, it's prevented the subdivision surface from working. Toggle it off, and it works again. So that can be quite handy if there's certain features you don't want to be affected within the hierarchy. Now, just a quick tip in relation to subdivision surface specifically, there is also another tag that you can use, which is the STS weight. And you can go change subdivision, and then you can just set the subdivisions to zero. So that's an alternative in case you can't use the stop tag for whatever reason. Anyway, as this is meant to be a general overview, I'm going to swiftly move on. Now deformers, I'm going to use a bend deformer here. Let's set this to the middle again. How deformers work is that they're meant to be the child of an object that they're going to be affecting, generally speaking. So if I place this as a cube, sorry, a child of the cube, and change the strength, you can see the deformer is now affecting the cube. We can select fit to parent so it fits to the cube and select fit length so that it doesn't bounce up and down as much but it doesn't really matter the main takeaway is that it's working because it's a child of the object now say you had multiple objects and you wanted them all to be affected by the same deformer now we can't do this because the deformer needs to be the child of the objects so what can we do what you need to do is place it on the same level of the objects that you're trying to affect within a group. So this bend deformer now affects all the objects within 
this level. And say if we've got another cube made it a child of the first one, you see they're all still being affected. Now, if there's ever a case where you don't want certain objects to be affected, what you can do is go into tags, again, go into the stop tag, and instead of stop generators, select stop deformers. So then now when you try and adjust the deformer, it only affects one which isn't being affected by these stop deformer tags. And again, if I toggle these off, I deform, toggle them on, and they're not deformed. There you go, that's deformers. I don't think there's really much difference. Um, there may be one or two exceptions, obviously, because this is a general overview, but for most deformers, um, it would be the case of placing it as a child of the object. So the last one I want to cover is effectors, and I'm going to use a random effector for this one just because I think this is going to be the best for the sake of demonstration. Generally, effectors are used um, with MoGraph, so I'm going to create a cloner. Just to show you what how effectors are normally used, and I think it's placed as it's placed it in the effector already. So I'm going to delete that just so you can see what we deal with normally. We've got these this cube cloned multiple times. Then in the effectors tab of the cloner, if we drag the random effector in, it will randomize the positions of those clones based on these values here for the x, y, and z. So the x, y, and z values of the cubes clones um, are being offset somewhere, a random value within 50 centimeters. If I set it to 500, It'll just exaggerate things a bit more so we can get a better idea of what's going on. And now within the effector, we can change the strength. You can see it's zero percent, doesn't affect it 100. It affects it a lot. Now that's great with cloners, but the whole point of this was to show you how it works with manipulating geometry. So what we do is place it as a child of the cube, go into deformer, and you can select any of these. I'm going to select point and ooh, maybe dial these values down. What it's done is randomize the positions of the points of this cube. We could also select polygon and it would do the same for the polygons. It would just randomize the positions of the polygons on the cube. I don't think objects would do much really. I think it would just move the object itself. So there you go. That's how you can use an effector as essentially a deformer. Now it does actually work as a deformer because if I get that stop tag again, go into modeling, go into stop, and if I select stop deformers, it should work. Ah, it doesn't work in this case. That's interesting, I thought it would have. Now it does work, just not in this scenario. So let's show you a scenario where it does. Okay, create a copy and a Take that out. Now we're going to treat this as a deformer again. We're going to place it within a group. We're going to place the effector inside and I'm going to remove that other cube. You can see it's doing the same as how the deformer worked. It's affecting both the objects within the hierarchy that it's contained within. Now if I go into tags, modeling, stop, stop deformers, it stops the effects of the random effector. Um, so that's quite interesting. I actually thought it would have worked as a child of the object, but there you go, learn something new. So yeah, if you're ever using random effector on an object specifically, it may be best to actually just use this kind of setup anyway, just so you're able to actually stop the deformer if needed. Because for some reason, if you make it a child, it doesn't count. There you go. Anyway, I hope this has helped. If you have any questions in relation to generators, um, deformers, or effectors, leave them in the comments below, because I'm sure there's going to be some more niche scenarios which you may have encountered and may be struggling with. But generally, I'm hoping the stuff that I've covered in this video has helped you understand how to use those items. So, yeah, I hope this has helped. Um, hope to see you in the next one. And, yeah, have a great day.